What's up guys? Here are my predictions for UFC 219. We're just going to go over the whole main card here because that's really where the big names, the big matchups are really at. There are some really good prelim fights as well, but I'm just going to cover all the five fights in the main card. So we're going to start with Carlos Conner versus Neil Magny. Now this is an interesting fight, a pretty fun fight. Two of the longest and tallest fighters in the welterweight division. And this is Carlos Conner's comeback, right? He's been off for a while ever since his loss to Damian Maya. Carlos Conner is mostly a striker. He throws every kind of technique on the feet. He's more of a Muay Thai style, but he moves around a lot and he throws unconventional, unorthodox strikes like jabs to spinning elbows, throwing in combinations that you don't normally see from other fighters like coming up with the same shots from the same side, which you don't see from normal fighters. Extremely tough, has a very durable chin, really good heart as well, but he does like to keep his head up sometimes, which also gets him caught more than he should. Pretty long fighter, pretty tall fighter, which won't matter too much because he's fighting an even taller and longer fighter for the first time in his career, I believe, in Neil Magny. He also has a pretty good guard. He's a very dangerous guard, but his takedown defense isn't really the best. Um, he gets taken down a little bit too easy, especially compared to some of the elite fighters in the division. It's pretty poor takedown defense, I would say, if I'm being honest with it. He's good with the jab especially, and he really sets up a lot of combinations behind the jab, or starting with the jab. Now the thing that he does different than many other fighters don't do, is he likes to go same direction combinations. So what I mean by that is a lot of fighters in the UFC and MMA in general, likes to throw left right left with their combinations mostly with their punches carlos conde he likes to go in the same direction with combinations and that doesn't mean he's throwing left left sometimes he'll throw the jab and then a spinning right elbow and now it's a different hand right different arm that's striking but it's going the same direction right or he'll throw a left hook and then fall up with the spinning back elbow with the right elbow and this is the same direction in combinations and then he'll probably follow up with a left high kick so it's still left, right, left, but they're all going the same direction. And this catches a lot of people off guard. And this can especially work because he's finding such a long and tall fighter in Neil Magny. And usually some fighters will block the combinations, but it's not too common that people block those kind of unorthodox combinations. But a guy as tall and as long as Neil Magny might have more openings in every area, the legs, the body, the head. It might be easier for Carlos Khan to actually target those uh, strikes in those combinations. And then we go to Neil Magny, who is a very tough fighter, doesn't gas out at all, very similar to Carlos Khan in the cardio area. Um, he doesn't have too much power in his hands, but he has a lot of output, extremely long with an 80 inch reach, and he has a really good jab, precise jab and a really good straight right hand as well as an uppercut. He's more well-rounded as well because he does have that wrestling offense that he will go if he has the advantage there. He's really good at picking where he has advantages and going where the least resistance is. So he could go that route. He has really good ground and pound pressuring on top. He can go for submissions as well. And the thing about Neil Magny is he's extremely tough. Now, he doesn't have the best chin, but his heart, it's insane, right? To hurt him is one thing, but to put him away is really hard. It's really hard to do, and you saw that especially in the Hector Lombard fight. Now, the thing about Neil Magny strikes is when he throws that jab, he throws a straight right hand, they don't have too much resistance, right? You can break his punches a lot easier than some other fighters because he throws 50% punches, he doesn't overcommit unless it's ground and pound. And the punches are also almost flicking out there. You know, he's not sticking, trying to stun his opponents with these shots, right? He's kind of flicking his punches out there just to keep touching them. And that can get broken through by parries and also coming over the top with force can break right through the punches, right? Like an overhand right or something like that or a high kick or any kind of heavy strike. So my prediction for the fight, I'm actually going to go with Carlos Condit. I think Carlos Condit is going to win by a third round TKO or I can possibly see a decision because of how tough Neil Magny is and Condit is coming off a layoff. Then we go to Cynthia Calvillo versus Carla Esparza. Now this is an interesting fight because a lot of people are really high on Cynthia Calvillo and this is a pretty close fight I would say. Um, you got Cynthia Calvillo who's mostly a grappler, a BJJ kind of a fighter. Um, really good transitions on the ground, really good at snatching submissions through the slightest of cracks. The smallest cracks just slipping right under there. And her biggest ability on the ground is actually the transition, like I said. Even in the most unfavorable positions, when the opponent is in such a dominant position on top of her, 
she's able to transition that to a extremely good position for herself. We've seen that when she rolled over when she was on her back, I think it was in north-south, she rolled over, grabbed onto the hooks, and got the opponent's back. I mean, that's insane. Her striking is a little bit wild at times. It's a little bit unathletic, you would say. But she is willing to try a lot of techniques, which throw a lot of fighters off. She is more boxing-oriented on the feet, but she'll throw spinning kicks. She'll throw things like that because she's not worried about actually getting taken down because she has an advantage over most fighters in that area. And also, she hasn't really fought any big punchers like a Rose Namajunas or Andrade or a Claudia. And the big problem for her, not only the striking aspect, she does have somewhat of a cardio issue that Esparza definitely does not have. And that comes from experience probably and many other things that Esparza has over her. Esparza has way more experience not only in total fights but the opponents she has fought. She's fought the best fighters in the, in the weight class currently, right? Calvillo has seen to get tired in her fights even in the middle of the second round. I mean that's going to be trouble for her in this fight. And her ability to take down Esparza. Esparza has a big wrestling advantage defensively and offensively and she's much more explosive and way faster than Calvillo is. So it's going to be hard for her to get to that world where she excels at when she can't cross the bridge to get there. And then we go to Carla Esparza who's more of a wrestler, um, really good wrestling, one of the best wrestlers in the division and take down artists. Um, really experienced as well like I said before. Small for the division but extremely fast. Fast on her feet, fast with her hands, she, she moves linear with her punches and she throws three, four, five punch combinations, straight punches at the opponent, which don't work all the time, but she is quick at getting to that distance to land them. But I can see them working in this fight because Calvillo is not too fast on her feet, and she likes to move laterally a lot. And as far as I can really use a sprawl and brawl kind of a style in this fight, if she has the advantage on the feet, if she doesn't, I could see Calvillo winning because Esparza will have to take her to the ground pretty early. And that could cost her the fight. Esparza is really good with the takedowns though. With every kind of takedown, she's really explosive with them. And not only that, even how small she is, her strength doesn't relate to her size. She's really good at actually controlling opponents on top, posturing on top of them. Um, not allowing them to get out from under her and she can land big punches on top. And if they do try to transition on her, she is actually really good at getting the back. So my prediction for the fight... I'm actually going to go with Carla Esparza. I'm going to go by a decision. I see almost like a sprawl and brawl kind of a style happening. And then I see possibly if Calvillo starts to get tired in the third round. I see Esparza taking her down then and riding it to a decision. Then we go to Khabib Nurmagomedov versus Edson Barboza. This fight is regarded as probably the highest level of grappler versus striker we have ever seen. Which makes it one of the most exciting and anticipated fights on the card. These two fighters are the best fighters on the whole card by far. You have Khabib Nurmagomedov who is more of a grappler, wrestler, sambo kind of a fighter. He likes to trap his opponents, break his opponents on the ground, on the feet. He's really good with that lunging uppercut, that lead uppercut that he uses to not only knock his opponents out but also close the distance to go under counter shots and take the opponent down with any kind of takedown. He's good with all of it, double leg, single leg, slams, throws, judo kind of takedowns, every kind of takedown he's good with, and he only needs contact on you. Any kind of a hold he has on you, he has a big advantage to take you down, and he has a good opportunity to do it. He's pressuring in every sense of the word. On the feet, on the ground, he's always on you. He doesn't let you rest. His cardio is pretty good. Um, he's able to go a hard three rounds, um, which favors him in this fight. Barboza is also really good with the cardio, but his pressure is a little bit more than Barboza's ability to withstand that. On the ground, he likes to smash his opponents, trap them under him. He likes to just constant, constantly work on top of them, land ground and pound at all times while he's transitioning. And he's trying to trap them under him, pin them on the canvas. And this usually breaks a lot of opponents because they have to keep working to get out of there. And he keeps working to keep you under him. And he's landing shots at the same time. You're constantly getting concussed. You're constantly getting hurt. And you're trying to explode out of these horrible positions. And he really likes to get the side control, the crucifix, the half guard. He likes to get you up against the cage if you try to wall walk. He tries to break your posting arm every single time. I mean, it's just terrible. It's like a horror movie. But it's going to be hard to actually get that takedown on Barboza from a distance because Barboza is one of the best fighters at that kicking range, which he keeps on opponents, right? He's one of the most precise deadly, lethal, powerful strikers at that distance. No one should be fighting him at that distance. You see this so many times of him knocking his opponents out because they stay there. Khabib is going to be pressuring, of course, but Barboza is excellent with every single kind of kick. He's like a Muay Thai kind of a fighter, but he has experience at Taekwondo, and you see, you see that in his sidekicks and his turning sidekicks. 
how fast he can kick and his, he's nimble and light on his feet at all times. He has big power. One of the fastest fighters I've ever seen pound for pound. Um, his cardio is insane too. He doesn't pressure too much. He likes to stay in the center of the cage and trade from there. And opponents recently haven't really tried to do that with him. Like you see Tony Ferguson, you see Michael Johnson, you see Donald Cerrone. They all go at him because he does have that big power. He's really good with the check right hooks. Um, he's really good with the jab. His switch kick is extremely fast. He's good with all of them. And the problem with his striking defense, that would be, is the pressure. And that plays into Habib's game because fighters who pressure Barboza and get into close on him, he almost, not panics, but he gets a little bit too excited at times to get them away from him or to knock them out. He gets overzealous in that area. And he gets a little bit wild because of it. And it opens up not only straight punches. Like you see Donald Cerrone catch him with a jab. You see Tony Ferguson catch him with many punches from the outside because of his reach. That Khabib probably won't have. But the takedown is also there. And Khabib is better at doing that than anyone else. So my prediction for the fight. I'm going to go with Khabib Nurmagomedov. And I'm going to go by a third round TKO. But I can also see a decision. Um, I, I can see that exact thing happening to Barboza. Khabib probably blocking some shots, trying to get on the inside of this this storm of Barboza. And then Barboza getting a little bit wild, opening himself up a little bit too much. Khabib getting the takedown, probably driving him to the cage, taking him down, and just working, like I said before, just trying to break Barboza down. But I do see him having a hard time in the beginning, probably the first two rounds of getting that takedown because of the distance and how fast Barboza is on his feet. But I do see at least one takedown in every single round actually being successful for Khabib. Once he gets those takedowns, I'll find it surprising if Barboza is able to get out from under him. And then we go to Chris Cyborg versus Holly Holm. A lot of people see this as a striker versus striker match, although Chris Cyborg is way more well-rounded than Holly Holm is. Chris Cyborg is also a pretty good boxer. She keeps her guard up at all times. She's pretty skilled in her defense. And she's pretty good with the jab. And even in the short exchanges, the short ranges, she's good at checking her defense every single time. Even throwing her punches. She's really good at holding her hands up. And her footwork is also constant at times. Cutting the opponent off, stalking them. It's going to be very interesting to see if she can actually cut off Holly Holm the way she does everybody else. And her big punch, the big money maker for Chris Cyborg is that right hand. Not only is it powerful, and she has more power than any female fighter pound for pound, if you're including Gabby Garcia. Not including her, she is more powerful than everybody else. She has that one punch knockout on that right hand. But not only that, she has extremely good precision that people don't notice. And her timing, the landing it, it's almost sniper-like. And she has an incredible ability to slip straight punches and ironically, she's fighting someone who only pretty much throws straight punches. And not only that, from a distance where it's easier to time it. And all she needs is one right hand. So that's a very good thing for Chris Cyber going into this fight. Her leg kicks are powerful. She also has a grappling advantage, a huge grappling advantage. She's good at closing the, closing the distance, clinching up, and tripping and throwing the opponent, sometimes slamming them because of how strong she is. She's going to be much stronger than Holly Holm is. And if she takes you down, she likes the side control. She likes the half guard and just landing bombs on you. And it's really hard to break her posture. She's so strong. I mean, she's fought so many grapplers. None of them are really able to break her posture. I think the only one who was able to do that was Gina Carano. But that was more because Chris Cyborg was getting extremely sloppy way back. That was like 10 years ago almost. The big opening on Chris Cyborg's defense on the feet is actually up the middle and down the middle because she keeps her hands on the side for these hooks and kicks coming at her, round kicks that Holly Holm likes to throw. And it's evident in the Urena Bars fight, in the Muay Thai fight she had a while ago, where she was getting constantly caught by those front kicks. Dropped her at one point too. I mean, she never saw them coming. So that could be a problem in her game. And Holly Holm does have a really good camp that would probably look back at that and probably utilize that in the fight. So that's something going for Holly Holm. Now, Holly Holm is more of a boxer, although she has like Taekwondo Muay Thai style of kicks. Her all-around approach and movement and stance and everything is boxing-oriented. Pretty good with the jab and setting things up behind the jab. And the big thing about Holly Holm is her movement that everybody talks about. Yes, she's really nimble, really elusive, more elusive than anyone Chris Cyborg's ever fought. But she likes to move laterally more than linear. You almost never see her move linear as well as she does laterally. And that is the reason why she has a really good takedown defense. Because she's able to get away from the opponents, keep that long distance, and move laterally. And not only that, the fighters that she's fought that try to take her down don't have the best footwork. And they were almost all grapplers. And all the grapplers didn't really have good uh, footwork and understanding of it. And weren't too well-rounded the way Chris Cyborg is. 
Chris Cyborg is going to have the understanding of the footwork and the ability to track down Holly Holm. Okay, then you will ask, then how will Chris Cyborg actually get her? How will she be able to track her down? Because she normally is seen to have untrackable movements, right? That's actually not really the case. Sometimes she gets actually pretty predictable. And the reason for that is she moves only one direction at one speed every single time. If she commits to go right, she's only going to keep moving right at one constant speed until she stops. There is no pausing and then redirections in her movements. It's always one. And that could be easy for someone that has good uh, ability to cut off the cage. It's almost one velocity every single time and it's only laterally. It's not like Dominic Cruz or Demetrius Johnson or TJ Dillashaw or even Rose Namajunas who like to change their motion, switch directions, switch their feet as they're moving to trick the opponent and make it much harder for them to actually get cut off. She almost skips one direction at all times. But but she is really good with catching opponents with the counter left hand, especially the counter left cross. She catches so many fighters with. Now she doesn't move her head a whole lot when she does it, and she's got caught a couple times for doing that. But she's really good at sticking on the opponent, knowing when to sit on her punches. Um, her jab is really good with setting up combinations even before the left cross. She's good with the right uppercut as well in combinations. And she's actually good at throwing three, four, five punch combinations, followed by kicks. But the problem with that is, and it's been evident in, especially in the Valentina Shevchenko fight and the Jermaine Duranemi fight, she stays at a distance a little bit too far away. Not only for the opponent to land on her, but also for herself to land on the opponent. You've seen it many times in those two fights, especially. She would throw a three, four, five punch combination. The first, second, or even sometimes the third punch in the combination will fall short and that gives the opponent so much time and the telegraph of Holly Holm's punches that actually gauge their counter shots on her. Shevchenko put on almost a check right hook clinic on Holly Holm and Jermaine Duranemi kept landing that right hand as she kept doing this. And they don't have the power that Chris Cyborg has. Chris Cyborg needs that one shot to land the right hand and that could be it. And like I said before, she's really good at timing and slipping straight punches and landing the right hand. So my prediction for the fight I'm going to go with Chris Cyborg. Um, I think that is probably what is what can really happen on the feet. I could also see her taking it to the ground and finishing it from there because she does have a big advantage there. So yeah, I have Chris Cyborg and I'm going to go by a second or third round knockout. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. And if you did, make sure to give it a thumbs up. And if you enjoyed my content, make sure to subscribe. Comment below what your guys' predictions are. I'm really curious to see what you guys think, especially of the last two fights. Now, I do have a list of videos that I actually want to make, but... A lot of them don't seem too relevant right now to make. A lot of people have been asking me to make a like a throwback boxing breakdown of some legend back in the day in boxing. A lot of people want me to do a Muhammad Ali and everything like that. But I actually want you guys to leave a comment below. Um, what kind of video do you guys want me to make next? Um, I'm actually looking for a lot of suggestions that are more relevant. I couldn't make a breakdown on one of the fights, a pre-fight breakdown. But the thing I don't like about pre-fight breakdowns, it's almost like a prediction. Right. Like you don't really know what's going to go on, but you're kind of making a prediction as to who has the advantage where, which is why I like to make post fight breakdowns because you actually have more facts. It's not just prediction and opinions as much, but leave a comment below what kind of video you guys want me to make. So again, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.